after the 1967 conflict in Israel, the game is over. The game is absolutely up. The Zionists achieved their goals, and the entire book of the Bible is 100% justified. And now there's only one chapter left, the Apocalypse, where the Jews who are not Jews and do lie but are a synagogue of Satan, that's repeated twice in the last book of the Bible. The goddamned Jews who are still fucking everything up, as they always have, they ruined the world once, and now they're going to ruin it again. Because the goal of the evil power is to thwart God's plan. Well, of course, that cannot be done. The Creator cannot be thwarted. So this is a game. And the first lesson you learn in this game is you have a choice of two directions. You can either try to understand heaven, which is vast and great and out of reach forever, or you can get caught up in the world and study the earth sciences. If you go to the edge of the earth sciences, you'll find out what the Greeks were looking for and what everybody's been looking for since, including Maxwell, Planck, Einstein, and Dirac, and everyone who's followed. They want to get to the atom, the A-T-O-M, atom. The atom was thought to have been discovered. Rutherford and Bohr and some other men, Thompson, pro were probing the atom with the new technology resultant from, among other things, the harnessing of electricity. With the aid of the technology advancements, it was possible in the early 20th century to get a very good perception of what was thought to be the atom. Now you need to know what is meant by the atom. And you probably think you know, I'm here to make sure that you actually know what is the atom. If you try to find out from Wikipedia, the textbooks and the lecturers, you will never find out what you need to know. Their whole job is to steer you off course over the cliff that they're going over. The synthesis that's needed for any single individual, and you could extend this therefore to the entire collectivity of humankind, the goal is to synthesize knowledge, which comes from science, with wisdom which is a confluence of rational logic and the perception of supernatural design, which is the basis of science, rational logic, and humanity itself, is exactly this, the perception of supernatural design. Do you hear any of your scientists talking about that? I can add to your confusion, and you'd better start realizing that you're confused before the end of this lecture. What is the atom? You will not be told for the same reason that religions won't tell you the truth either. Science will not tell you the truth. It can't. It can't do it. It cannot tell you what you need to know. What you can do with science is to learn what it knows and then draw your own conclusions. That alone is true science. You have to make the decisions. If you let your scientists tell you what's real, you won't make it. You won't reach the goal that you know you must reach. The same thing is true in religion. The same thing is true in every walk of life, every avenue of investigation. Our curiosity drives us to try to understand reality. 
Well, you never will until you do it alone. You have to do it alone. So where do you begin? Here is the essence of my first delivery in what now is approaching 600 video lectures on cutting-edge science with, with a view towards truth, absolutely unique point of view, only from Anagalactic. Nobody wants the truth. Everybody wants to convince themselves that they do want the truth. That's called hypocrisy. So where do you begin? For instance, what is the atom? Why would you want to know that? First, you have to realize what it is you're trying to know. And that's an open-ended question, which leads somewhat naturally into philosophical observations, which are anathema in science. Nobody cares about your opinions. In science, we're only interested in what can be proved. But why would you want to know, for instance, about the atom? There is a very good reason you will want to know about the atom, but you will only find out that you do need to know about the atom when you've turned your attention away from Earth and you begin to study astronomy, the study of the heavens, not the Earth, the heavens. You want to know about stars, planets, the moon, their motions, the mechanics, the dynamics. Of course, gravity figures very prominently into these computations. First of the orbit of the moon, then the orbit of the Earth around the sun, then the other planets, and then there's the appearance of comets, which still baffle the fuck out of our scientists. They have no idea what comets are. The very recent near passage of an interstellar interloper, as it's called, Oumuamua, this was thought to be an extraterrestrial craft. This shows the fixation that's locked into the human genome that we're seeking the aliens. We're trying to discover the gods. We're trying to get back to our creator. We're trying to figure out where we come from so that we'll know our purpose. Why are we here? And the very first question that every rational man asks in that vein, why do we die? What is death? The cessation of consciousness. The total cessation of consciousness. It's like going to sleep and not waking up. That's actually what it's called, both in religion and you could say in science, if you want to put it that way, it's kind of poetical. But your consciousness is terminated. Well, that makes absolutely no sense to us. Because why do we have consciousness if it's just to be terminated? If you go to the Eastern religions, they'll give you a big song and dance with thousands of years of supposed thought behind it, that it's just the dance of Shiva or some cockamamie demigod who's just having a dance, a dream, a puff, a pill up in heaven and he's just laughing his ass off or her ass off or its ass off or their asses off, just laughing and we're a big game. Mark that word game. Yes, it is a game. That can be proved. Although it's based on a construct of human projection, so it could be a total fantasy, there's no way out of that. We might be convincing ourselves of anything. That's the major scientific, or it's really pseudo-scientific argument against the notion of a creator. It's because it's obvious that's a human idea. Where's the evidence of a creator? Well, what's meant by that is where is he? Let's see him. Where is your creator? The way that you can prove to yourself that there is a creator is by observing the strict rules of logic and being ruthless with yourself to be sure that you're not biased or making an anthropomorphic projection to invent your own fucking god. Is there an actual, 
objective creator. That means you need to be able to prove whatever you say. Can you prove that there's a creator? Yes. And that's the first thing you need to know. In order to defend yourself in any way against the overwhelming propaganda that states point blank, there is no God except for children and imbeciles. The only people who believe in God are anti-scientific superstitious maniacs. And that is the status quo today, definitely in America. You're not allowed to believe in God. You're not allowed to assert that there's a creator. Well, that's why I'm here, is to make sure that that assertion is made and defended. The only way to even begin science is with a direct perception that this had to be designed. How can you prove that? It's by something called level of complexity. It's actually called the order of complexity. Order is a scale larger spectrum. Order refers to orders like hundreds, thousands, tens, those are orders of magnitude. So a deadlock, absolutely inviolable, virtually tautological. Tautological means self-evident. That's always a dangerous thing to say. But there is an axiomatic basis for the direct perception of a creator. There definitely is a creator because of the order of complexity of the ecology that can be extended. It's virtually infinite and we know nothing so certainly as that there is a creator because if there were not a creator there would be no order to the complexity and yet it is inestimably precisely ordered that means there was a blueprint there was a design and if you look up the word design in any dictionary including wiktionary which is taken as something of an authority now, it doesn't matter. All definitions of the word design involve the concept of consciousness because there's no such thing as design without a designer. You must have a focal point of consciousness to have a design for anything. A building does not build itself. A jet does not build itself. This is a well-worn almost trite avenue of proof, a path of proof. But it's remarkable when you want to tell a lie, say at the government level, to convince a whole society that there's no such fucking thing as a goddamn creator. And they'll even say it that way, not realizing they're invoking the name of the one that they deny by... A sort of an analogy. <laughs> There's no such thing as a goddamned God. And they will exclude you rigorously from the system of survival if you don't go along with their goddamned lie. But if you want to be a real human, you're going to have to transcend their bullshit. You're going to have to strike out on your own, and you will need, you will be required by the universe to discover the Creator. If you don't, you will die. Now, you may say, well, we're going to die anyway. Oh, are we? Yes. And then what? This is the question that nobody wants to face because it seems to be unanswerable. It's not unanswerable. What happens to you after you die? Well, if you're if there's nothing after that, you're just gone. There's no, no more you. No more consciousness. You're gone. And there's nothing after that? Then go kill the Pope. Go kill the Pope. Go murder all the people that you hate. Until you're slain, you're just mown down in a hailstorm of bullets. A lot of men have been tempted in that direction. Well, since nothing matters... I think I'll just make up my own rules and fuck morality and fuck the rest of humanity because they're all going to die too 
and we're all hopeless and it's futile. There's a whole book in the wisdom books of the Southwest Semitic Holy Scriptures that's devoted to that topic. The only book of philosophy in the Bible, Ecclesiastes, the actual name, Kahelet. I don't expect you to try to pronounce that or learn it. You're not interested. I know that. You're going to have to get interested. That book talks about futility. It's totally against religion, and yet it's in the wisdom books. How did it get in there? Vanity of vanities. Ebel Ebelim. Ebel Ebelim. Call Ebelim. Vanity of vanities. That means futility of futilities. Ultimate futility. All is futility. Nothing changes. Nothing progresses. Everything's in vain. There's no satisfaction. Then you die. If there is no consciousness after that for anybody, there's no such thing as morality. It's nothing but an expediency to keep the government stable. The governments promote morality in order to control the herd. Now, if anybody gets out of line, certainly if they become criminal, but if anybody is too vocal about fuck politics, fuck the state religion, and goddamn all of your lying scientists, someone like myself, who just tears down the whole structure from within, well, that's a threat. That's a threat to the stability of the futile system. The futile system will defend itself. It is defending itself from Jerusalem, from Moscow, and from New York. Perhaps Beijing will have a say, but Tehran will never have a say. And the game is over. And pretty soon everyone's going to find out. What happens after death? Then you'll find out. What the alternative is to oblivion. The reality. What really happens after death? Any ideas? You'd better come up with some ideas. Your soul depends on it. And that's my message to begin the Equinox series. Today is Saturday, June the 22nd. This is early in the day. It's going to be 103 degrees today here in Chico. So I'm broadcasting early before it gets extremely hot. I hope that you are interested in the number two. I only gave you one example of the number two. You can choose the earth sciences or you can choose astronomy. A wise man always chooses astronomy. It's a one-to-one -one correspondence with wisdom. You either look to heaven and start getting some answers from upstairs by looking at the moon, the planets, the stars, the galaxies, and everything else that has been discovered. In truth, what's really there, and you start thinking about it, and you start drawing some conclusions, or you will be swept along, and you will be swept away, and you will die without knowledge, without understanding, never having achieved wisdom, never having probed your limits. Maybe you took drugs. Maybe you were a sexual fucking deviant. Maybe you're a Democrat or Republican. Won't matter. Won't matter at all. Catholic, Protestant, Jew, anything. No, no significance whatsoever. One goal, the creator of the heavens and the earth. If you don't get it, you lose. I'm here to make sure you have every opportunity to get the answer right. Because your soul is on the line whether I say so or not. I simply say so because you must know that. You're headed for worse than oblivion. Unless you realize your potential and act on it, do something real. How are you going to do that? 
You haven't got a clue. I do. So stay tuned. And in the next presentation, we'll continue on our discussion of the number two. Choose astronomy, not the earth sciences. Choose astronomy and stick with it. But stay tuned here because I have the answer in the earth sciences area as well. You will come to know I have all the answers and nobody else does. So stay tuned and keep looking up. This is Anagalactic, your only source for truth left on this earth. We'll be right back.